It's raining. It's raining in the middle of winter. So today was just a deluge of rain, and the roads just plain were not safe to go out thrifting. So instead, I decided to record a video about the largest miniatures in my collection. In D&D terms, these are presented roughly from large to huge to gargantuan to colossal miniatures. First off, it's a Golden Army Automaton from the movie Hellboy 2. This is part of the Collector's Edition of the DVD. The Collector's Edition is pretty expensive nowadays, but you can still find this particular robot on eBay for cheap. Fun fact, if you're wondering why I have two of these, I found one at a garage sale for 25 cents back in 2011. This miniature is a rebased orc cyclops from Mage Knight. It's a very well-painted miniature. The sculpt is a little bit weird in spots, but certainly a great cyclops alternative miniature for D&D. &D. And here's a rather shrimpy Storm Titan. This uh, wins me over, though, with the translucent effects. I am a sucker for those. This is a later offering from the D&D &D Hasbro line. And speaking of Hasbro miniatures, here is the absolutely massive Eldritch Giant. This has not made an appearance yet in 5e as far as I know, but if you need an easy TPK, try to translate this spellcasting behemoth into your game today. And speaking of TPK, here's the Pathfinder Treachery Demon, known in D&D as the Glabrazu. And here's some huge miniatures from the first runs of the D&D board game. These are based on the Hasbro sculpts, and they are a ton of fun to paint up. A Draculich, an adult red dragon, and a Baylor. What an amazing set of foes for some classic D&D end bosses. And for our final huge miniature, it's a huge Pathfinder Rune Lord statue. This animated statue is got a pretty good pose. It looks like he's swiping down on a much smaller foe. It's a nice miniature, but very expensive nowadays. And we come to our first toy conversion. This is a massive boar. I repainted it slightly and based it on a furniture disc. Next, we have a Reaper Bones dragon. This guy, I believe, is called uh, Death Sleet. And unfortunately, he has the habit of pitching forward. Uh, many people used uh, rods to prop him up. I didn't realize that this miniature had that problem when I originally painted him. So uh, I just kind of have to re-bend him upwards every time I use him. Next up, we have a McFarlane action figure. I believe this one is something called Bone Spawn or something like that. I did some very minor modifications to this. I locked some of the joints in place and I used some red washes on him. Next up, a lovely Shalike Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is an amazing miniature. I got it at a garage sale for a dollar. Unfortunately, if you're not super lucky, this is going to be very expensive anywhere else. Another McFarlane dragon, this time a two-headed one. With these McFarlane ones, there are some obvious joints because they're meant to be kind of posable action figures slash statue things, but this guy looks table-ready enough for me. Ah, uh, yes, the Reaper Bones Great Mother miniature. This is from my recent painting experimentation with the Citadel Contrast line. It doesn't look too bad. This was pretty much a speed paint. And even though I didn't get that many details, I think this looks pretty nice on the table. And finally, we come to the Mighty Icing Death. This is one of the few limited edition D&D miniatures I own. I got this right before the prices of these skyrocketed. So I count myself very lucky to have this miniature, and I've used him as the end boss to many of a campaign. This is one of the few official gargantuan miniatures out there. It originally came with a Wolfgar and Nameless Drow Elf miniature, but uh, I don't have those. I only was managed to grab the dragon before the prices went up. Uh, I believe this was around 2012, 2013. Hoo-hoo! And we have the McFarlane Great Fire Dragon. This miniature is kind of goofy, but frankly, it's 
pretty fun to use in a D&D game if you have just a pool of lava and this happy fellow can jump out and eat the PCs. This statue slash action figure used to have a little 25mm guy in the front of it, but that is very easily removed. Other than that, uh, this is as is. I haven't had a chance to really try to make the fire effect look better or anything else. It certainly looks nice enough on the table as is. So there's a little bit of a story behind this one. This is the McFarlane Ultima Dragon. This is uh, from the Ultima Online video game. And I used to love, 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 love the old Ultima games. I started with Ultima 6 on the PC, and that was like the first game that was like my game that, you know, I owned. But uh, I never got into the MMMO. You know, it's just one of these things where I saw this dragon, it looks so cool, and I bought it. And I haven't really had a chance to use it for D&D yet. It just kind of sits on my shelf. It's not that great looking. It has like obvious little, uh, it has obvious little joints and whatnot. But uh, yeah, this is just more of a personal favorite of mine. One day I will use it for a D&D game. Some of you might know a lot more about this statue than me. I know it is a World of Warcraft Vindicator statue and he is missing his bludgeoning weapon. Uh, I did play and finished Warcraft 3, and I don't remember this guy, so I'm assuming he's just from the MMO. But yeah, I saw this statue in a thrift store for $5, probably because it was missing the weapon, and I grabbed it. I have used it as an end boss and will do so again. I never got around to repairing his uh, empty weapon hand thing there, but I think he looks imposing enough even without the weapon. And this, by far, is the largest quote-unquote miniature that I own, and he is almost as big as Kringle. You know, this was a really fun idea for a video, and I got some new ideas for D&D encounters as I was going through some of my more massive miniatures. I hope you all had fun watching this video. Uh, please let me know if you have any specific questions. I was surprised to learn that the Mark Farland dragons are actually going down in price a little bit. So if you're interested in a specific dragon, do some searching on eBay and you might just get yourself a really good deal. If anybody has suggestions on what they would like to see next from my collection, please let me know in the comments below. Have a great day, and as always, thank you for watching the video. You are a prince among owlbears.